at a certain rate with accuracy, and we, we and some would say with prosody, with being able to inflect your voice. You have to have vocabulary, right? You have to understand the meaning of words in order to have comprehension, and comprehension is the last strand. It's what we all, the intent of reading is for understanding. So you have to have all of that. And we know that kids learn to read better when they come from a, a home where reading is valued, where oral language is bountiful, and you know where there's a lot of good modeling. So kids who come from impoverished backgrounds, um, single family, single parent families, they're at risk already. They have lower vocabularies when they start school. They're usually, you know, there often isn't the, the literature-rich household. And we have even more of a responsibility in the educational system to help these kids become readers. Okay? So if you take all of these strands, they're all interwoven to make what I call a reading rope. And when kids struggle and, they, and they're falling apart in reading, what we need to do as teachers is become diagnosticians and start to unravel the rope to see where they're falling apart. And it generally is in those five strands. Okay, we'll talk about those in much more depth here in a minute. So some of the consequences, you know, these are some of the individual and societal uh, consequences. And again, with so many, uh, you'll see a slide later that the high, high rates of illiteracy among people living in poverty and the thought that they're not fulfilling their own potential, but they're also not giving back to society uh, either. And uh, there have been some research studies done um, to talk about the economic impact, but I'm not going to get into that. That's a talk in and of itself. Um, John Steinbeck said, you know, what, and, and researchers, reading researchers uh, say this too, that reading is really one of the most complex tasks that an individual has to do. And that it happens that children have to, uh, to do this. And unless we support reading, if we don't teach it systematically and explicitly and sequentially, um, th it really leaves a lot of kids behind. And again, we have a lot of kids coming into Groves in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade who are reading two, three, four, five grade levels below uh, grade level. And, you know, we are pulling them out. We're, for the most severe kids, we're double dosing them, dual reading uh, instruction. And then we're giving them additional reading instruction. So two hours a day, we're pulling them from science and social studies classes to get this uh, additional reading instruction. And parents often get very anxious about that. But my response to that is, if you can't read, um, then science and social studies texts, you're, you're not going to get information that way anyway. So let's close the gap in reading as quickly as we can in whatever ways we need to do it, and then allow the child uh, with the textbook. Okay, um, again, some of the economic studies, hundreds of billions of dollars to support reading, uh, the normal acquisition, and then also the consequences of reading failure. And that's annually, hundreds of billions of dollars. Now, what's a staggering statistic that we see here in Minnesota, which has the largest achievement gap in the country between kids who can read and kids who can't, about um, Seventy percent of eighth graders do not read at a proficient reading level, and that is with decent comprehension. Seventy percent. Forty percent of eighth graders don't read at a basic reading level, and that would be with fluency. So it's amazing um, to see that spread here in, in Minneapolis, and the um, implication for that, we have a lot of kids dropping out of high school uh, because they're illiterate. They're just making the choice to drop out. We also know that only about 
percent of the kids uh, out there are so neurologically miswired uh, that they won't be fluent readers despite the best instruction. So 95% of the kids who don't read well are trainable uh, to, to be fluent readers and comprehenders. About 95% of kids who um, don't read well, or about 90, 90 to 95% of kids who don't read well are not dyslexic. It's not a neurological issue, but it's an instructional issue. I term them instructional casualties because they have not been given good instruction in school. What are the most critical years in school for the teaching of reading? I would say early. Yeah. Kindergarten Actually, kin kindergarten through third grade are the critical years. If you're not reading by the end of third grade fluently at grade level, there's only a 25% chance that you're going to catch up in the remainder of your school career. And all these statistics that I'm um, talking about come from research studies sponsored by the National Institutes for Child Health and Human Development. And this guy here, Dr. Reed Lyon, he's actually a mentor of mine. Um, I met him about 20 years ago. Uh, he was doing some consulting work for the school that I uh, was teaching reading, and he was in my classroom a lot. And he's since moved on and became uh, very involved with the National Institutes of Health. In, in reading. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. When you're talking about 95% and you say the 5%, you know, neurologically, is this special ed kids, kids who mm -hmm. have PCD that can learn? Yep. Are you including them in that? Mm -hmm. Is yep. that still the same statistic then by third grade? Yep. Because there's already that gap in general of skills. But yeah, these, um, now, some kids, you know, with, with pretty significant cognitive impairments, you're never going to get that to that level of comprehension that you might have, that you should have with other children, and that's just a cognitive limitation, but they can become fluent readers. The mechanics. The mechanics of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay and, and, and then, you know, going back to some of these implications, you know, we know that kids, um, they just feel like failures. The kids who come into Groves, when their first days here, they're looking at the top of their shoes, and they're bent, and they're emotionally anguished and anxious and um, it's very very painful to watch them yeah and then kids who don't read you just see them just the, that motivation piece if they're struggling with with reading um, they lose motivation for school in general and it's a real problem and this is a, a really sad statistic in the south mississippi georgia alabama they're planning future prison growth based on um, the literacy rates in middle schools. And that, that's, uh, that, that's how high the correlation is. And this is for which state? In the south, like Mississippi, Alabama. And there was um, a judge in New York City uh, that I spoke, with, uh, spoke to at a conference. And he was a juvenile in the juvenile system. He himself had a learning disability. And he estimated that 80% of his kids, juveniles, coming through his court system in New York City um, had a reading issue. And one of the things he did for every student who came through, he demanded that they have uh, a full psychoeducational evaluation because he felt if he could turn around school, for the, if they could become readers and turn around school, they'd be out of the penal system. I already mentioned this statistic. 43%, oh, I, hope, I hope no uh, inappropriate messages come up. 43% uh, <laughs> <laughs> four, of Americans with the lowest literacy skills live in poverty, and 70% have no job or a part-time job, and only 5% of Americans with strong literacy skills live in poverty. So the correlation is, is so apparent. Uh, that also um, of all kids with a learning disability, about seventy-five percent of them, it's a real disability. Okay, so our challenge is, is we know how to teach reading. There's no uh, debate about it anymore, and I'll talk a little bit in a minute about the debate of the last fifty years. But we know scientifically how to teach it, uh, and now it's just getting that science down to teachers 
in the classroom because there's no curriculum out there, I'll guarantee you, there's no curriculum out there that will teach reading proficiently unless you have teachers who understand the developmental stages of reading and how to teach in those stages. And we just, teachers coming out of uh, colleges of education by and large don't have that knowledge because frankly there are not enough classes required of them. And I'll talk about some policy things that we've done to change that in Minnesota. Um, in, in